a lower inflation and interest rate do not mean that things will become cheaper because if I'm going to annualize the inflation numbers instead of reading from this monthly data, things will become much clearer. Let's say, for example, the monthly CPI numbers divided by 12 months, I will get this annualized inflation of 4.1% in 2023, 8% in 2022, and 4.7% in 2021. And say, for example, a plate of pasta in a family restaurant will cost me $10 in 2020. It will cost me $10.50 in year 2021, $11.30 in year 2022, and $11.80 in the year 2023. And say, for example, this year in 2024, the CPI settled, the annualized CPI is at 3%, and this plate of pasta is going to cost me $12 at the end of this year. And reference to $10 in 2020, the cost of this pasta has increased by 20% throughout this four years. My name is Con Hao. My work in this channel is to study behavior science and finance, discover correlation between different markets, and uncover potential opportunities. And before we get into the subject, please do take some time to read into the disclaimer. And the Fed has always been saying that they need more data. And I'm suspecting that they are seeing what we are discussing here today. And we could see that from here, there's always a risk of mimicking the 70s inflation. And we could see that there's one, two, three, four, five. And where are we today? And we are at maybe one, two, three, four, five. And if the Fed or central bank are not managing this well, and there's always a risk that the inflation may have a U-turn back once again. And how can we tell that the inflation is going to stabilize at 2%? And what we're seeing here is the yield curve, where we all hope that the Fed will not just cut once in September, but a continuous rate cut in months to come. So one of the ways to access this to happen is to see that the inverted yield curve going back to a healthy yield curve like what we see down here. And this is a healthy yield curve before July 2022. That's where the short-term borrowings rate are lower than the longer-term borrowing rates. But in the year 2022 in July, we could see that for the first time, the yield curve inverted. This is where the June 2022 CPI or the inflation numbers was hot at a high of 9%. And until today, investors are still sending the message to the Fed that the yield curve is still inverted. And why this matters? Because the interest rate or the Fed fund rate is determined by the Fed, whereas the yield curve is shaped by the market forces among the investors. And when the yield curve is inverted, the market is also sending a message that recession could be around the corner. And I would say that the investor are pretty right as we can see this jobless numbers. It has suddenly risen from this period. It's almost quite sudden. The Fed is likely to cut the interest rate in September, but the big question is if it is going to be just one or two cuts or maybe more cuts that is coming. And this two 10 years yield curve will provide me with the insight. If it reverts back to a healthy yield curve, I'm expecting more cuts to come. However, if it remains inverted, the Fed will likely remain as cautious like right now. For our pasta to get cheaper than in the year 2020, that's called deflation. And neither, I hope that that will happen. The market are always telling us on their next move. Stay tuned for incoming tutorial. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Join us in our weekly case study and discussion click on my profile icon or description below to find out more. Feel free to leave me any comments below. I love to exchange ideas with you on what's about to come. Really happy that you stay through this tutorial. You have many great trading weeks ahead.